Hi, this is Evangelist Denise Allen with Triumphant Ministries. I'd like to thank Pastor Virgil Taylor and the Eagle Ministries International Church for this opportunity to spread the gospel. That is to say, the good news. Today, I would like to take a moment and let you know that your help is not on the way. Your help is not on the way because your help has already arrived. You know, when Jesus said it was finished, he backed us up and began everything. All of his counter moves are already in the plan of our life. He doesn't react to something that the enemy has done. He has already been proactive and created a plan of triumph, a plan of victory for the believer. I want to talk to you today about the word propitiation. P-R-O-P-I-T-I-A-T-I-O-N. Propitiation, atoning sacrifice of an angry God, an offering to appease, satisfy an angry, offended party. That's what propitiation is. It's used only twice in the scriptures, both times of Christ's atoning blood that appeases God's wrath on all confessed sin. Confessed sin. Sometimes we forget to ask for forgiveness. So you have to, of course, ask God to forgive you for sins you've created that you know and that you don't know because you may have done something that you actually have forgotten. Now, by the sacrifice of himself, Jesus Christ provided the ultimate propitiation. Let's turn to the scriptures, 1 John 2 and 2 and 1 John 4 and 10. Let's start in verse 1 of 1 John chapter 2. It says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Verse 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 4.10 reads, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and set his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. I'd say that's very good news, wouldn't you? Now, just glancing over these two scriptures, I'd like to go back and talk for a moment about the sins of the whole world. When we were not Christians, we committed sins just like the people in the world today. And somebody was praying for us. Somebody was standing in the gap. Somebody was going to the Lord for us. The Lord Jesus loved us so much that he would already died for us, but we were out in the world committing sins and we didn't know. I know I didn't know. I had no knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was young, I didn't grow up in church and I did not live a Christian lifestyle. And it was through a series of events in my life out in the world that I was introduced to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. And when I read these scriptures now, I think about the sins of the whole world. Sometimes it seems like the world has just gone completely mad and they've completely forgotten about the sacrifice that Jesus did for them and for us on the cross. And you think, how could God love them with an unconditional love? But some of us have forgotten. There but for the grace of God go I. Because we came into the knowledge of the truth. Because of the sacrifice. Because Jesus was the propitiation for our sins. Amen. Not just our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son, or as the scripture says, and set his son to be the propitiation for our sins. God is proactive. He is a creator. He does not react to the things that the enemy does. He has already reacted proactively in our lives as we walk through what he has already called finished the work on the cross. He's created opportunities for us to triumph in every situation, even in the midst of circumstance. God has already created, it's built in a way of escape. The seeds of greatness that God has placed in us their time released in our life over time. So when Jesus said it was finished, he had already completed everything that we need within us. The timing that it was set just to meet you at the point of that need at that very moment. Because the finished work means it's already done. 
it's in there. Now, the word advocate in the Greek is defined as the comforter, helper, intercessor, consoler, paraclete. You know, there are times when we do need a comforter. There are some times when we need somebody to go alongside us and help us. There are times when we need someone to intercede for us. And there are certainly times when we need to be consoled. And that is what Jesus does. He's the advocate for us. So even when you feel you're all alone, you're never alone. I shared with somebody just the other day, the world has a saying, only the strong survives. But in the kingdom of God, he says that the strong shall bear the infirmities of the weak. And he says, let the weak say, I am strong. He is the propitiation for our sins. Now, I know there's a lot of distressing things in the news and happening all around us. I've got to remind you, brothers and sisters, don't get caught up. A couple of years ago, I heard it in my spirit and the Lord said, don't get caught up. I was waiting for him to tell me what not to get caught up in. Like, what are you talking about? There are so many messages being thrown at us all day constantly. Everything is a message through the media, through your cell phone, through your television set. All day long, we receive messages. All day long, we see images. All day long, we create thoughts and thought patterns in our mind based on the things that we see, hear, feel, taste, and touch. And so it's easy to get caught up in a cause or a matter in this world. But I have to remind you, beloved. We have to keep watch on our own souls. As the scripture says in Philippians 2.12, therefore my beloved, as ye have also obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There are several things in the news media right now that are hot topics, hot buttons that create fear and anger and rage and it feeds into all these negative senses but what happened to whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely what happened to thinking on these things we can't allow ourselves to get caught up in the circumstances and situations in this world because jesus has already resolved these things in that he is the propitiation. And again, he said, let the wheat and the tare grow together. God is going to do the separating. So let us not judge the world, for we too once lived and walked in it. Amen? But now we are in it, and we're not supposed to be of it. Now, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings or tell you not to feel anything or, or join a great cause for a matter, but let's remember we are pilgrims here. We're not here to stay always. And sometimes we have to gird up the loins of our mind. Sometimes we have to be reminded that we're the light and we can't get caught up in the darkness. Amen? In the 70s, I had learned something very distressing. I'd learned some news about a certain family member that didn't really treat my mom really well. And I was really angry about this. And I kept them in my heart. And for many years, I felt some kind of way about that family member. In the 80s, when I became a Christian, you know, I still kind of felt that way. And my mom passed in 86. And I remember what she told me about in the 70s, about that family member. I realized even then I was still hurt and I was still angry about this. Now, I've been a Christian. I'm loving Jesus, but I have unforgiveness in my heart. It wasn't until about... 2009, one day I was actually in the car alone and I was driving down the road and suddenly I heard an audible voice say to me, how long are you going to keep that anger? I mean, I, I heard it just crystal clear and I knew exactly what he was talking about. He said, how long are you going to keep that anger? When will you let it go? The family member had passed on and my mother, she had forgiven and she passed on. And I'm on the earth. And I'm still mad about it. I am mad. Every time I thought about it, I was just madder than I was the last time I thought about it. And it had been several years. And I was still upset about it. And I just kind of gasped. And I, I paused and I said, Lord, Lord, I forgive them. And I said, Lord, please forgive me. And at that moment, I wondered. He said he would not withhold any good thing 
to those who walk uprightly before him. And I thought, what in the world possibly had been withheld from me? That I had been walking in unforgiveness all that time. I mean, I really, you know, it like hit me like a bullseye between the eyes there. That I really was just unforgiving. And still praying for people and laying hands on folk and, you know, all these things. Now, you know, I said that to say I was thankful the Holy Spirit reminded me of that unforgiveness that I had in my heart. What I learned from that was we need to forget. I don't think there's a person on the planet that's ever been the church that's not been hurt by someone at the church or in the church or around the church. And some people get offended and they get upset and they leave and they never come back. And some people just hold grudges against people forever, even to the point where they forgot what they were mad about. They're just mad. That could create sickness. You know, that could create disease that you're so hating on somebody because you haven't forgiven them. It's not for them that you forgive. It's for you. It's so that you can clear yourself and free yourself. So my suggestion is to do it right away. Whether you feel it or not, the moment the hurt hits you, say, Lord, I forgive them, no matter what it is. The New International Version in Matthew 6.15, But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you sins. We need to do our maintenance on ourselves in this walk as a Christian so that we can check ourselves and see where we're at, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I want to thank God for Jesus being my advocate to the Father and the ultimate propitiation for my sins and for your sins and for the sins of the whole world. You know, you can tell somebody today that their help has arrived and it's arrived in the person of Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, 10 states simply this, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Did you catch that? Speaking these two scriptures alone, believing them in your heart and confessing them out of your mouth brings salvation into your life. Now, if you've read these scriptures, believe them in your heart and confess them out of your mouth. Let Pastor Virgil and the folks at Eagle Ministries know. You'll be so glad you did. Now, remember, your help has arrived in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the propitiation for your sins, my sins, and the sins of the whole world. Now, listen, that doesn't give us a license to sin. Amen. We're striving towards that perfection every day. Amen. So let's not get caught up in the things that are going on all around us. We can pray and seek the face of God for the best course, but stay on course. Amen. This is Evangelist Denise Allen reminding you, 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every